Hi, thank you for joining me here again today. I'm Kevin Lentz, the pastor here, Trinity and Badger Ranch. And on these Mondays, I do a sermon recap from what happened in worship yesterday. And yesterday, we looked at the word compassion. I talked first about the word passion, that is to deeply feel a love towards someone. Compassion is to deeply feel a, a sorrow or a sympathy for someone. And it's important that we express both to the people in our lives. And so we give thanks that the text talked about sheep and shepherds because Jesus said, ultimately in Mark chapter 6, he looked upon the crowds and he had compassion for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. Now, why would he feel that way towards them? Why would he feel a sorrow or sympathy towards the people he was looking at? Well, because the, the teachings of those days to the people were not about Jesus yet, like we're blessed to have. They were told by their elders of the synagogue and the temple and the Pharisees and so on, you lead a perfect life. You don't ever do wrong. You will upset God when you go against his will. And that, that was the message that people were always hearing. That's why when Jesus looked upon them, he had sympathy for them. He had compassion for them. He was sorrowful for them because they were not hearing the truth. He was amongst them, but they did not yet know this is our Savior. He's going to, in time, die for us upon his cross and make us the people of God. And so we give thanks that as a compassionate shepherd, Jesus looked upon those people, loved on them, cared for them, eventually would die for them. I talked also about that they knew Jesus to, to him, he was just a, a great guy, a miracle worker, like they didn't have, but but he was not yet realized as their savior. They didn't know about the cross that was coming. They didn't know about the empty grave that would be defeated. That would make it all make sense. That's why the message that they were told during their lifetime was the old covenant. Be holy, be perfect, be good. Don't ever go against the will of God, which is impossible for us. So we give thanks that Christ has come and become our savior. I also shared that the word compassion is not in the New Testament all that much. In the four Gospels, it's even written only just seven times in the four Gospels, the word compassion. But one of the places it's listed is it describes the prodigal son's father, dad's compassion, waiting on his son to come back home, waiting on his son to wake up, realize I've made a mistake waiting to go back to the place he knew he always had a place where he always belonged, where he knew he would be loved. And so when he was making his way back to his original home, the father sees him from a long way off, is filled with compassion and runs to him, hugs him, loves him, gives him his best, throws a party for him. He even said to the other brother, your son was a dead, was dead and now he's alive. So the father expressed great compassion. And that example, that parable, that father is really our father who art in heaven. The God who loves us, unending, undying, always supportive, always present, passion, compassion, both for his people. And we give thanks that Jesus told that parable because our father is that father who is just waiting on his child to wake up, realize his mistake, and go back to where he belonged. And as God's people, we make mistakes, we sin, we go against the will of God. But we wake up, we repent of them, we're sorrowful for them, and we give thanks that God forgives us through the blood of Jesus Christ. So I invite you to read Mark chapter 6, verses 30 to 34. That was the text. And I pray you have a good week, and I'll talk to you again. Bye-bye. <laughs>